Um, parathesia is the term. Parathesia. 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 And it's something we've all felt. It's that prickly sensation. Like when your arm's asleep. Oh. Mm. Inspired by the adventures of our nurses, therapists, and techs, A Beer with Atlas is the only healthcare traveling, craft beer drinking podcast. Each week, we'll open a few beers, talk about the brewery and the style of beer, and then dive into some research curated specifically for each episode. In the end, we hope each one sounds like a conversation you'd have with your friends while enjoying a few cold ones. Welcome to another episode of A Beer with Atlas. I'm Rich. I'm Brian. And I'm here. <laughs> I've noticed on some of them, Dolan starts uh, introducing himself instead of letting me introduce him. Right. So I figured I would let him introduce himself this time. And that was a doozy. Good job. <laughs> well, he's learning, right? I well, see, true. usually I go for it and then you talk over me. Mm. So I, I like <laughs> waited. I waited for a second this time. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Maybe I should have warned you ahead of time, like this is what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, we don't plan anything here really, so. He still, uh, he still pushes the buttons and makes us sound good. So Dolan and he is in his living room with his keyboard and his dog, who will probably bark at least once at yes. the mailman or yes. a squirrel. The dog, or not Dolan. FedEx. Mm. Well, oh, I, well, maybe he would bark too. I don't know. Yeah, we'll mm. see. That yeah. garbage guy. <laughs> mm. Dolan does not like him no <laughs> at all okay so we are going back to Shiner Texas this week uh we've been there before with their uh Christmas was it the Christmas beer yeah Shiner cheer holiday cheer mm -hmm. which I thought I I believe we all really enjoyed it yeah um, this one I don't think Dolan's gonna like very much based on his untapped uh profile but we have Shiner prickly pear I don't. I couldn't even tell you what a prickly pear is. Well, I can. I figured you might. Yeah. So uh, the best way to describe prickly pear is if yeah. you've ever watched a cartoon or like a comedy that took place maybe in the old west, and somebody falls into a big cactus pile, and they mm -hmm. stand up and they've got cactus stuck all over their body. Yeah. That's a that's a prickly pear basically. So it's not actually a pear per se? No, but what it really is, is a leaf off of a cactus that it bloomed. There's like a nice red. You can see them on the bottle there. You see oh, those, yeah. those red mm -hmm. things? Those turn into more of those green petals. So yeah. that's like the bloom. And then it grows into the green thing that you see. So it's just like a stacked green and green and green leaves of a cactus, basically. Okay. That's what a prickly pear is. My only, uh, my only exposure to prickly pear is uh, the picture that I sent to you there through text earlier was from the Jungle Book, from yes. the Jungle Book song. That was really the only uh, exposure I've ever had to prickly pear. This smells delightful. I don't know what Dolan is thinking, but mm, it smells Got great stummery. color. Really oh. great color. <laughs> it looks it like a beer, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Say, give me a beer. That's what it looks like. It looks like it, that. It really does. You would fool them with it. They would spit it out right away. Right. They mm, would be like, yeah. I don't this want has flavor. What fruit? Rawr. <laughs> beer shouldn't have fruit in it. It's like for, you know, this is a manly fruit though. It's a, you're drinking a cactus. How that's mm. pretty manly. I think it smells sweet and yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, the smell, yeah, mm. I don't know. We'll, let, we'll go into it, I guess, huh? Hmm. Well, let's taste it. What do you think, Rich? It doesn't taste like it smells. I'm not complaining. Hmm. It smells sweeter than it tastes. Yeah. It's almost tart to me. A bit. It has a little bit of tartness. Yeah. But it's mm. it's clean mm -hmm. and uh, I would say refreshing. It's not heavy. There's no like, uh, it doesn't feel like it's sitting in there in your gut or anything. Like a, yeah, 4.9. Like so we're still, we're sub five on the ABV. Yeah, this is, this month is just like summer beers kind mm -hmm. of is what we're going for. So something a little different, um, but something also that a lot of people can find in, in our area. 
I mean, Shiner is one of the older breweries in America. We've talked about mm -hmm. that before, but yep. they have a pretty big distribution. So this is something that you can only get in the summertime. It is a seasonal. Um, and it says on their label there that it's just like you, uh, you picked it, we brew it. So they have like an award, not an award, but like a, a way to nominate beers that you want to have again that they've yep. made in the past. And this is the one that won for this year. I'm showing you here. Let me wipe off some of this. It is very carbonated. Like, yep. you're getting a ton of bubbles. A lot of bubbles. Here. But it doesn't necessarily have – it's weird. It doesn't have that carbonation. It doesn't taste – yeah. 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 It's, a, it's interesting because it doesn't taste like what it smells like. Nope. And it doesn't taste like what it looks like. But it no. still tastes good to me. I like that. But this is a beer that I think you could – like, you mow the lawn, you, do, mm -hmm. you pull some weeds in the yard, you, you whatever – you go and this like this is a nice refreshing yeah and a beer to go with that it's almost like a goza without the salt you know yeah. what i mean like it's yeah. it's approaching there it's just like you're waiting for that salt hit and it just isn't there but mm -hmm. it's not really supposed to be but that's what i would say flavor wise look at dolan's face he still doesn't like it <sighs> sometimes you just have to drink a beer at work dolan you you know what it is for me mm. so growing up i eight nepales right cactus mm -hmm. and when you cut up raw cactus there's that slime like there's yeah. a there's like a slime and it, it kind of gives like a like a green bean kind of smell or like just like a bland like watery slime smell <laughs> um i get a lot of that and it i i don't know triggering for you i'm i'm also not like into the floral thing and i think it's pretty floral uh, yeah i could i can see that well i'm sorry you had to eat cactus mm. uh it was good cooked <laughs> i know you can buy cactus like jarred cactus i've seen that before oh yeah yeah is That's it like just... a like a side dish dish like a vegetable or something is that well, the way that my mom made it, it was the main dish, but, you know, it was basically Nepali. It was like fried in onions and like a sauce, and then you just ate it with a tortilla and hmm. some Spanish rice, and it was good. Is it a good source of protein? Is that why? It's very similar to green beans. Like, I'm, it's, it's texturally not, but the taste, yeah. Very it's definitely right? not a good source of protein because it has 1%. One serving gives you 1% of your daily protein. It mm. does give – it's made – like the leaf itself or the thing, um, the prickly pear, is 88% mm -hmm. water, which is where your slime comes from. Mm. And then there's like uh, – the nutritional portion of it is 10% carbohydrate and 1% protein and fat. So mm. that's why you're probably mixing it with other stuff because there's not much nutritional – value yeah there. i mean it was like so like heavily sauced in like a, a chile and mm. yeah so i don't know really good in the pan i'm not sure i mean i guess this is the the prickly pear part of it right so mm -hmm. i there's still i still taste the cactus though a lot <laughs> yeah. uh, look not all of us can like every beer that we drink that's true right and that's yeah. what makes all the beers that we do so different and special and fun. Yeah. Yeah. This, this one to me, now it's reminding me of a sweet tart. Yeah. The more you get into it, it gets mm -hmm. sweeter if that is a yeah. thing. I don't, yeah, you're right. Uh, it has, I, I did some nutritional digging cause I just wanted to know like what, like why would you put it in a beer and what, you know, how does it work? Um, if you have a serving, they say it's a hundred grams, which I don't know. There's yep. some things I know about and that that's not one of them, but, uh, 41 calories and you get 17% of your vitamin C for the day in the service. So it's not bad for you. It's no. just great. And then 24% of your magnesium. So, which I think is like B12 or something like that. So, mm. um, it's usually called cactus fruit mm. and you must really peel it carefully if you're going to eat it. So I don't know, Dolan, when you were having, cactus as a kid did she have to pull all the prickles out 
Was it no, already that way? No, when you buy it at the store, there's they've already done it. Yeah. Um, I've yeah. never actually seen the cactus at the store with still the, the yeah. spine spikes or spines in it or whatever. That would be a terrible job. That would um, not like be fun. Peel the prickles off a cactus. To, oh my goodness! No, what do you, you what do you do for a living? I'm a de prickler. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what did I write down here? Oh, um, so what they used to do, I guess. Who knows how they know this, but they would. Maybe this is how they still do it some places. Um, basically, they would beat it on rocks and roll it around on something hard and like a hard surface. And that would just kind of break off the spines. Mm. Um, and then, or you can just throw it like in the fire, they said, or you can like almost like a rotisserie, hmm. keep cooking it on there. And then they'll basically just burn off and then you can bust it open and get in what you want to get. But mm. um, the prickly pear itself or the, yeah, the, the cactus yeah. part. Yeah. The prickly pear itself. Um, what kind of Dolan was talking about a little bit ago, um, I found out it's used a lot in Mexico in foods. It's used, I saw recipes for appetizers. Uh, it was in soups, salads, entrees, like he said, um, used in like a ingredient in breads, um, desserts, drinks. There's like um, refrescos that are flavored, prickly pear, candy, jelly, anything you can eat that has some sugar in it this flavor is available. There's cookbooks I saw online. That's like how to use it or how to prepare it. Um, so it's not something I ever had. I can tell you that on the farm in nowhere, Nebraska, but uh, mm -hmm. it's fun to have it in a beer. Um, the most popular way that I saw it, uh, like what he said earlier, um, well, I guess was with huevos with eggs, right? So it was like mixed oh. in with like an omelet or an omelet. So oh. eggs and, and cactus pieces. <laughs> Or tacos, which is rich as jam. Yeah. Uh, well, hmm. one of the ways that my mom would make it is the uh, chili, chili Colorado. And so you can have cactus in that and you can make tacos out of that. Hmm. But the way that my mom mostly made it was like uh, uh, Nepales con chili rojo, which is just cactus with red chili, chili sauce. So, and chile sauce, not like chili. Not chili, sauce. yeah. Not like yeah. Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it is not chili, but that's a whole different conversation <laughs> <laughs> for a different time. Yeah. Notice, you ever notice, like, like, not necessarily, well, like when Dolan says it, when, when you get the actual pronunciation, it's always so much cooler than like the American. Like, <laughs> oh, it's just like cactus with chili. But like Don says it, it's like Chile day, something or another, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it always sounds way cooler. Nepales con Chile rojo. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep, it's elevated right there, sounds like yep. to me. Yeah, that's um, fancy. This is an ingredient, probably as you could guess, is popular mostly in the southwestern America, the United States. So like Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, um, kind of goes hand in hand with like green chilies and that sort of thing. But it's also popular around the world, and there's other places that this grows and that are use it um, and have used it for like thousands of years for food. Um, Morocco, Libya, Saudi Arabia, Malta, which is an oh. island, uh, southern France, and Italy. You can also find these popping up, growing around, that sort of thing. So using them, you know, in food for different reasons for a long time. Also, the uh, you see on that label there, that red part again that we're talking about. Yeah. Used they have been using that as a as a dye, so for oh. food coloring or cosmetics, uh, like the first lipsticks and stuff, which is ground up bug pieces and this sort of stuff to make a dye, and then that's what they would put on. Oh. Um, it was, and I think it was for a long time the second biggest export out of Mexico after silver. So. Because back in the day, you know, we're talking like spice trading days, you know, like a long time ago. Hmm. Um, that was something, cosmetics were a thing that, you know, was mostly Egypt and uh, some in Italy and Greece, that sort of place. But this was the, the biggest growing area, um, Oaxaca, I want to say maybe if I'm saying that right, in Mexico. So that was something that they were producing 
on purpose to export for money because they found out all these other uses for it other than just whatever. Um, some of the other things that they use it for, uh, they feed animals this, so like livestock. Uh, they use it in um, fuel, bioethanol, so like gas supplement basically. It's used in plastics. Um, they use it as, they call it a natural fencing. So a lot of times what they would, especially a couple hundred years ago, um, you have, you know, those huge ranches or whatever, you're not putting up a fence, but you could sure plant a whole bunch of these cactus mm. and uh, block off areas that you don't want your animals to go through or people yeah. to come through because it's, you know, it's dangerous to get through this stuff. So yeah. um, they would plant it like a whole, like a whole row of it. Like we've seen in the Midwest, you see whole rows of trees as like indicators of land where it drops off and stuff. <laughs> and that's what they would use it for. It's on the flag of Mexico. So if you look at the flag of Mexico, there's an eagle perched on the cactus. And on that cactus, there's a couple of blooms of the prickly pear. Hmm. And then it showed up. I was looking around for some musical tie-ins. It shows up in a song called My Rival, a Steely Dan song on the Gaucho album from 19, I think, 80 hmm. or so. Yeah, sure enough. Look at that. Well, there it is. Uh, sitting on the prickly pear on the, on the yep. cactus with the, with the little, huh, I'll be darned. And then in 1961, this was interesting. They, I thought they planted 17 miles of it in Cuba, in northern Cuba, right on the beach side to keep people from leaving Cuba. So it was like a wall, basically, a scratchy wall, a barbed wire fence that they put up. And it was, it's like still there. It was near Guantanamo Bay, the base, yeah. the military base. The military put it there. Huh. And it's for the most part, and I can understand it's still there. Um, but it was something that was like to keep when Cuba was starting to lock down everything and not let anybody out. That was one of the things that they implemented was the cactus, the prickly pear hmm. to uh, make sure people didn't go through and get into the, into a boat on the ocean. Yay. Communism. Yeah. Right. Mm. And then there's a soccer player that his nickname is prickly pear um, or football, I guess he's from Ooh. Uruguay. His name's Bruno. Furneroli. Furneroli. How do you get that? Because he has spiky hair. Uh, spiky boom. So they call him Prickly Pear. He's the Prickly Pear. Yep. All right. Interesting. Okay. I, I guess I, I, the more I get into this, the more I like it. The more it yeah. just, yeah, I don't. Hmm. I, I really am enjoying it. I'm, I'm, I wish Stolen did, but that's okay. Dylan, does it get better as you drink it or no? You, you're still just having flashbacks to it's, eating cactus. <laughs> I like to eating cactus. I, I just, I don't know. It's, it's kind of one of those things where I love asparagus, right? But yeah. eating it raw is like. No, that's no good. No. It's, it's, I know people who like it raw and I can stomach it. Like I can finish. It's too it. stringy. How do you. Yeah, no, you got to cook it. You gotta, well, you got to do something with that. If you get the the stuff out of the the ditches in Nebraska, it grows wild. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, so oh asparagus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. That, yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, you can eat that, and it's it's almost like a like a pea like it pea flavor. It does affect your pea. <laughs> that's true. Oh, pea. you know that's, you know that's a genetic thing, right? Like some people. <laughs> Some people have that and some people don't. What, asparagus pee? Yeah. Really? Oh, I have it for sure. Oh, I do too. It does not affect me, no. It's a genetic thing. Either it does or it doesn't. It's, it's like the like cilantro. The cilantro. Yeah. Yeah, it's the exact same thing. Either wow. it does or it doesn't. That's one of my favorite reasons to eat asparagus. <laughs> yes. For later. You're and like, it happens oh, yeah. really fast. Within an hour, you're like, oh, dang, I had asparagus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like to revisit that because I do enjoy asparagus. Oh, yeah. Yes, like, oh, I really enjoyed that dinner. Hmm. <laughs> so so yep. to me, I'm getting a lot of that, like I said, just that raw cactus, the slime. That's, mm. that's what I'm getting. Like, I know that there's other flavor profiles, but that's strong for me. That's weird because I don't get any of that. But I mean, I wasn't exposed to, i've never been exposed to that me so either yeah i wouldn't probably be able to pick it out gotcha. there are some beers um and aaron daly taught me this when he was doing some studying for like the cicerone program mm -hmm. but there are some beers that after a while 
um, I think stout's one of them that'll go almost like a green pepper flavor. Mm -hmm. And you know that oh. it's bad. So if you taste green peppers, you're like, this is not a good beer. This is, this is spoiled or there's mm -hmm. some sort of infection that happens that causes green pepper flavor. So <laughs> there is vegetable flavoring in beer, but it's not on purpose. But right. this one, mm. I guess well, technically is a fruit. So we'll, yeah. we'll let it slide. I got you. Yeah. See, and that's the other thing. It's like, I, this is while we're on the topic of stouts tasting funny. Mm -hmm. um, when I drink like a really like just oil looking stout, like just yeah. super dark, maybe it's, you know, whatever. But when I drink one of those, sometimes I get um, like notes of soy sauce, but my entire life, I've probably consumed like more soy sauce than anybody I know. Oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> mm. But I mean, I have soy sauce at my desk. Like, <laughs> so you've got on one side, you've got cactus tacos, and mm -hmm. on the other side, soy sauce. Yes. Don's yeah. got and uh, Don's got a very eclectic family. That yeah. sounds like it. And the food like intermingles and mixes, and you get some like, like fusion. fusion. Yeah. 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 So my mom is Filipino. And then at the time that I was living with my mom, she had a husband who was Mexican. So, but it, my entire life, you know, my mom, everybody in my family knows how to speak Spanish except me because I was born before my mom learned. And then my uh, mom learned. And then they learned. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. yeah. So, but they say that the Philippines is kind of like the Mexico of, of Asia. Um, hmm. which is true a lot of their foods are the same so that's is that what a, i grew up is that a compliment or is it just a comparison no no, no. like they actually gained independence from spain and so oh. that's why a lot of filipinos have uh, yeah. mexican last names hmm. so or spanish colonization last, yeah spanish last names right um well, and I so, guess yeah. you get a lot of the spices in the food would probably be similar and mm -hmm. it's really interesting when you really look at like the history of food where everything comes from and ingredients specifically, you know, like, and how you can trace it. I mean, just like German beer in Mexico, you know, like if you follow it enough all the way back, you can figure out yeah. why things are that way. It's pretty cool when you really think about it. Yeah. Um, I did a little research on something that's not related, but kind of is. Um, parathesia is the term. Parathesia. 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 And it's something we've all felt. It's that prickly sensation, like when your arm's asleep. Oh. And I was like, okay, yeah. I want to find something that's a, like related to prickly, something prickly. So that's what I did a little research on. So I wanted to figure like, okay, I've had that. What, what is it? What, why do you feel that way? What, what's going on? So what it is really is when you have cut off <laughs> circulation from your brain to this body part, whether it's a leg or arm foot whatever usually your arm or something like that your body is like freaking out basically and it's saying oh my gosh uh something's happening uh we can't feel anything uh let's let's double check let's send all these impulses all these let's wake up the nerves that are there the cells mm -hmm. and stuff let's uh, see if this is like a problem so it starts firing all this stuff down there and then you get that prickly sensation pins and needles the, or whatever uh, yeah 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 or you can't feel it feels like your hands sometimes you'll feel like your hands are real big or whatever mm -hmm. and that's your basically blood vessels and your nerve system misinterpreting signals because it doesn't feel like that limb or body part is mm. really there anymore and then when it starts to come back so usually you'll shake your hand or your arm or you know whatever hang your arm down mm -hmm you'll start to get this array of sensations because your, your body part is basically coming back online. So you'll feel like warm. Your, your hand will be hot mm -hmm. um, or numb, tingly. You get that feeling in there. And that's basically, it's basically an alarm system for your body. Mm. Feel that because if you don't do anything about it, then you can get blood clots and uh, you know, eventually that's real bad nerve damage, that sort of thing. Yeah. So it's, it's like an alarm for your system, your body to be like, Hey, something's wrong. Uh, fix it quick or else you might not be able to fix it at all. So mm -hmm. that's a kind of a cool evolutionary thing that, that we do that we, we can't make happen. I mean, 
I guess if you could, you know, sit on your hand or something. Well, you could sit on the toilet for too long and scroll Facebook and then your leg go numb. I mean, true. That's your body saying is that right? (laughs) Yeah, your body saying get back to work. Yeah. (laughs) So that's that's what that is. But I I always kind of wondered like why that is or what happens with it. But Hmm. and then the other thing I found, and I wanted to talk about. I don't know if Dolan's gonna maybe be a little too young for this, but Rich, do you remember um, the warm fuzzies versus the cold pricklies in school? Mm-mm. So at least when I was in elementary school, we learned about warm fuzzies. And that's like compliments, giving people compliments. And the cold pricklies is like a verbal, you know, put down. It makes mm-hmm. you feel bad. It's a cold prickly. And uh, you don't want to hand those out. Um, and I thought that was interesting because... I have uh, a group of friends that I've had for, geez, I don't know, some of them 35 years. We've got text chain all day, every day. Someone's chiming in. And it's almost always cold pricklies. Mm. We're always blasting each other, right? Right. And I feel like it's weird because once you you crest this hill of friendship and then it's, the conversations are usually uh, ball busting, all negative and, uh, you know, funny at, at your expense, you're getting burned or roasted <laughs> sure. and that brings everybody together. And I thought that was so, so funny because at least for me, that's really how we communicate. There might be one thing that's real in a whole chain of events, but the rest of it is just jokes and put downs. And I wondered if that was true for, for you guys. I've never, that part is true. Like I still, I have, that's pretty much how I communicate with my brother all the time. Uh-huh. You, that that's pretty much it yeah but uh yeah that's that's interesting i never heard it referred to that as before though that's interesting well oh, technically God. this is a cold prickly right <laughs> <laughs> not right. in the same sense maybe for dolan in the same sense but not necessarily for us in the mm-hmm. same sense hmm. so i went back and even though it's it's been a it's been a you know a, a minute since since we talked about Spetzel Brewery in mm-hmm. in uh, Texas, I went it's back got that and German looked. name, doesn't it? Yep, old Cosmo Spetzel, Cosmo. Yeah. That's a it, cool name. They did make um, for a while. They had a mix twelve packs of beer, and there was a beer that was like a I don't think it was a black IPA or something like that, but it was, it had Cosmo's name. It was like Cosmo's revenge or something like that was the beer nice. made for him. Cosmo. I, that's Cosmo Kramer from Seinfeld. Yep. That's just a, it's just a great name. It's just a super cool name. So I went back and I kind of revisited that. I went, I revisited that episode and then just looked at like, what didn't we talk about? Um, the, the dude that's the brewmaster now at, at Spetzel Brewery there in, in Shiner, Texas, it started there when he was 17 years old. So the dude started there and it wow. didn't say how old he is now, but he started working at the brewery at 17. Dang. Who knows? Maybe he was like just sweeping the floors or probably. Something. Yeah. Who knows? Um, he's only, so Spetzel brewery started in 1909. He's only the seventh, sixth, sixth brewmaster. In a hundred years. In a hundred years. That's he's pretty only cool. The sixth dude to be the head brewmaster. That's legit. Wouldn't it be like, cool to like be able to go back in time and see like what's Shiner doing in 19, you know, 50? Like what are these breweries doing? So it's we're going to have, we'll have to do an update or we'll do another, because I've listed some of their other beers here. Okay. As I was looking, I saw on their website, a dude named Mike Renfro, he's a Texas native, wrote a book called Shine On. Oh. And it's like a picture book and it's all about the history of the brewery. So I went and found it on Amazon and ordered it this morning. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we'll have to, uh, we'll have to maybe, I don't know, come back around to it or something. I just, yeah, I think that'd be awesome. Like what were they producing in 1949? Yeah. It's just so cool. Like in a country that is not as, you know, we're not very old in the world scheme of things, Mm -hmm. Uh, but to have a brewery that's over a hundred years old, I think that's pretty, I mean, that's about as historical as we get in the United States. Right. A hundred years is, ancient in the u.s so that's a lot for us yeah to still be you know around and making new beers and stuff that's pretty cool or this is the other option we have we could actually go to shiner texas not right now unfortunately the brewery's Mm. closed right because of all this bullshit yeah but the when it opens back up we could go down there 
specifically for the beer, but yeah, yeah. in the town of 2090, 2069 people, so not very many people at yeah. all, there's a like world famous chicken joint called Friday's Fried Chicken. Mm. And the pictures online look unbelievable. Wow. I like chicken. I love chicken. Fried chicken, man. I can smash some fried chicken. Yeah. Chicken I, is know, my favorite vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever, I, like, I, I always kind of felt guilty. You're like, you know, you said crushing. You like, eat like five or six pieces of chicken. You're like, oh man, that was, that was a lot. But then when you really think about it, it's not that much volume. It, it's not that bones. much. Unless you're a real cretin, you're not eating mm -hmm. the bones. So you're not getting a lot. It sounds like no. a lot, but you're not getting a whole lot. Right. The, the worst for me is like those rotisserie chickens. <laughs> yeah. We bring those home and Sam and I will like eat almost the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> but there's, I almost. mean, a chicken is for two people. That's not that much. Back, back in the olden True. days when there were still buffets, right? Oh, remember, yeah. remember how buffets were? Yeah. <laughs> I, Maddox, it, it was... Maddox had some difficulties early on with eating. He didn't like to eat. Yeah. So I'd have to make it a game for him. Oh. And so we would go to like the KFC buffet or whatever, and we would have a contest on how many pieces of chicken we could eat. And of course, I'd never let him win, but I'd well, let him no. get close. And then at the end, I would crush him. I would just, I'd be like, oh, you're so close. And then I would eat like four more pieces of chicken. Right. It's That's not really that much. That sounds like a fun game. It's a good game. Yeah. yeah. We used to have, when I was uh, a youngster, when I was just kind of my first big boy job when I worked at State Farm, we had a, you know, it was the first time I'd ever worked in an office where like you had a lunch hour and like people left the office to go eat together. Like that was something I'd never experienced. Sure. So we created this club um, It was called the Fat Club and it was feasting around town. <laughs> and once a week we would go to a different buffet. And just just pig out yeah. how much we could go. We get like you know Chinese buffet or um, like old country buffet was one, mm. uh, but the KFC one that one was always popular. Oh yeah, we, we would we would be like uh, you guys are out of chicken and potatoes and corn and biscuits. Can you bring us some more? So we would yeah mm -hmm. feasting around town club man like a whole pan of each please. Yep, just bring it to our table please. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Oh, there were more days. than more than a few times we back when in my in my uh, poorer days there like the college days or whatever uh -huh. same sort of thing and we would hit those buffets pretty hard. Yeah. What yeah. about the Vegas buffet? What do you feel about that? You know, I I appreciate the Vegas buffet. They can get a little fancy though, and an expensive. Holy and, crow! Yeah, Some I, uh, of those are like sixty bucks. So my wife went with her family. Uh, this was a few years back. They had like a 24 hour uh, buffet pass that you could buy. So, oh, oh. yeah. That and sounds like a game. She enjoys buffets or whatever. But like, she's one that we go somewhere and she picks a little and then, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. So they, they bought this 24 hour pass. And she was like, it was the most miserable 24 hours ever because they had to go to all these buffets to get their money's worth. So, breakfast lunch second lunch early yeah. dinner regular Snack. dinner yeah. second ice dinner. cream yes and oh. they're just and they're going to all these different caesars i think it was caesars buffets <laughs> all over so you'd have to walk like where are you going now um we're walking to the paris what are you gonna do there go to the buffet yeah now where are you going i'm walking to caesars palace what are you gonna do there go to the buffet oh okay. that oh. sounds miserable Oh, <laughs> it's always hot in Vegas. You're like sweaty and full and just want to take a nap. But you're yep. like, no, I got to go eat more crab legs. And you're sweating out crab legs and oh, chicken. Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I want to get out of my house. Uh, I'll, go to a, I'll go to a buffet. When can we ever go to a buffet again? I wonder. I don't know. Maybe, question. Maybe never. They're not really that good for you. No, they're really they're not. really not. I mean, even aside from COVID, like yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. you get everything else. <laughs> you want to? Here's an awesome buffet story, and then I'll get into the last of my little research. Okay. Here. So, uh, Jenny's uncle 
who is pretty much the closest thing Maddox has to a grandpa, uh, went to this uh, Chinese buffet, over 144th and Center-ish area, okay? Okay. So Omaha, if you're familiar with this, over by Oakview Mall. Uh, Old dude, he's watching this old dude get ice cream out of the thing, right? So he's done eating, he's getting ice cream. The dude's got, like, he's got snot, right? (laughs) His snot, like, dripped into the ice cream, into one of the ice cream buckets as he's, like, digging ice cream out of one of the other buckets. Like, he's like, I straight Uh, watch this dude, like, uh, uh, ah. like, drip snot into, yeah. Check, there you go. <laughs> go. Go have some buffet. I went in, when I was in college, there was this um, Chinese buffet that was over by my buddy's workplace. And we would, every once in a while, we'd meet there for lunch. And my dad would just come sometimes. It's over by East Campus in Lincoln. Mm-hmm. One time we were sitting there and we watched a mouse run across the table where the ice cream machine was. He was just like chilling out. And we were like, uh... No, nah, no, thank you. It's time to go. Yep. Now we're done. Luckily, that place is not open anymore. Mm, I'm not surprised. That's weird. We're just like, we saw a mouse, and they're like, okay. <laughs> oh, that's Gary. He lives in the oh, back. Yeah. He cleans it was up. Was dead or alive? Oh, it was live? Okay. We had no oh, man. That, mm. that was like whatever restaurant accidentally had a mouse go in their, their deep fryer. Um, yeah. I, I, I read the article. Well, oh. <laughs> I read the article that like one of the cooks saw a mouse and they started chasing it and it went in the deep fryer and <laughs> yeah, it was bad. They had to like close for the day and hmm. yeah. So they, luckily, yeah. I'm surprised they changed the oil. That stuff's it's a pain. Yikes. You know how that is, Dolan. Mm, I do know how fryer. that is. Sucks. Yeah. Mm, thanks. Yeah. Gross. All right, so before we do the untapped, I thought it'd be fun to, since this was the People's Choice Award winner, right? So people actually voted on this one. Yeah. Um, I thought I would go through the rest of just the odd ones, that the odd beers that Shiner produces on their website. Okay. I went and dug up a bunch of different different ones on here. So um, they do a barrel, a wine barrel aged blonde ale. Uh, that is a collab with a vineyard in Fredericksburg, Texas. And that's kind of interesting. Hmm. So like, I, just, uh, I wonder if we can get that. I've never seen that before. I don't know. I, I enjoy a good wine barrel aged beer. So I wonder if we could. I've right? only seen those in stouts. Usually it's like a Merlot barrel mm-hmm. or something. I bet our friend and uh, Atlas recruiter Heather Kylan could get that for us. Mm, maybe. We have to put in... HK by this one right here. <laughs> Put it on the wish list. Yep. Uh, this one would be good if we could try it. Sea salt and lime goza. I think oh. I've had that one maybe. Have you? I would. I think so. Sounds right up my alley. Uh, I just like the name of this. So this is an unfiltered wheat beer that they produce called Weiss and Easy. Weiss and Easy. Weiss, yeah, that's good. Weiss, 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 Weiss yeah. and Easy. 95 calories on that one. So oh. they're, uh, they're very calorie conscious. Diet beer. I guess. Yeah. Uh, they have a six pack. You get two of each of these. It's called the Texas Heat Wave. It's a stra- two strawberry blondes, two hill country peach wheat, and uh, two mango Kolsch. I think those are have been in the store before. I think I've seen that before. Hmm. Do you have the Ruby Redbird on there? Ruby Redbird was the actual next one. Yeah, Ruby Redbird. Dolan, do you like lager. you like grapefruit, Dolan? I so I love grapefruit flavored things. I don't yeah. like grapefruit, the actual fruit. You should you should try that one because it's grapefruit and ginger. Ooh, and, and those are both things I don't like. But in that beer, oh mm. my god, it's so good when it's hot. Oh really? That's a I, six pack every summer. I always get one six pack, and then uh, you know it usually lasts me a while. But just up at the mm-hmm. Hy-Vee? Yeah, it's it's in stores right now, and if you like that sort of stuff, you will really like that beer. I'll have to try it. Like a like a tartness, like a kind of a citrusy yes. tartness. Hmm. Yep. Okay. Easy drinking too. Like you'll you'll go through them pretty quick, especially if it's hot. Oh man, so good. Okay. Mm. Here uh, another ninety nine calories, so another sub one hundred calorie beer. They just call it light blonde. So just a light. That's their light beer, I guess. Yep. Their light offering. That one I've had, and it's good. I've had a lot of Shiner. They've been around a long time in Nebraska. Yeah. Well, and, and that's brings me to the next one, Shiner Bach. Yeah. Which uh, everyone yeah. has had, it seems like. Been around since 73. That's like the one you think. I thought that was the name. 
That's what I Long thought when I first got into it. Yeah. Yep. Shinerbach. Uh, they do a they do an IPA called Wicked Juicy. I I think I've had that one. I I, I tried a lot of theirs. They've uh, you know they're hit and miss for me for IPA. They're they're not. I don't know. It's traditionally a German brewery, right? Right. And I I find that those kinds of places do really good on the lagers and some of the other stuff. Mm-hmm. But like hazy IPAs, that's just not their forte. Not their thing, right? But they make. I'm just telling you, I, th- I don't know if it's because it's hot in Texas. They make just great summer beers. Like a lot of the stuff they have. And they also have one that every year for their birthday, they make it's like a birthday cake beer. Oh, and it's, cho- it's like super chocolatey, but it changes every year. Like some of the ingredients, I think hmm. last year, two years ago is raspberry chocolate, but it's not a stout, but it's like, a, I don't know how to describe it. It's not like, a porter, Oh, but it's, it's like a lower calorie you know, 120 calories, probably birthday, yep. birthday <laughs> cake, basically in a bottle. And it's, pretty, is it like a golden stout? It might be kind of like that. Maybe it's weird, not, not barrel aged or anything, but that's one that comes out, uh, I think in the fall. And that's, that's usually one that's fun, but it's always super chocolatey. Hmm. And the last one I had, I thought would be interesting just because I don't know if I'm a fan of these. I try them, and I don't know if I'm always a fan of them. Quite honestly, I think they should probably just be called a porter. Uh, Bohemian Black Lager. It's very, mm. it's very difficult for me to, in my amateur beer palate, to to distinguish between a black lager and a thin porter. Yeah, I, so, yeah, I would have that problem too. Yeah, not yeah. I don't know. They they make quite a few dark beers i mean they're one of the first breweries i ever had a black ipa from mm-hmm. so they're not afraid of like roasted malts and stuff but they just i don't know they're not a, they're not like a stout brewery i've never i don't think i've really ever had any stouts for them but usually lagers and stuff is is their forte well i think you're right i mean they're they're a very proud german heritage german austrian mm-hmm. like that's that they know who they are they know where they've come from it's ale it's blonde ales lagers mm-hmm. you know that type of thing so they know yeah. who they are so. Yep. All right. Untapped. 62,000 check-ins on the prickly pear. Uh, where do you think, I know where Dolan falls because he checked it in earlier this year and it was no bueno. What was it like 0.25? Mm. He was, he was a bit generous at the 1.25. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I'm going to go, I don't know what my old ranking is, but I'll say three, seven, five for me. Mm. Mm. Okay. Dolan, what do you think? I, Probably be a little bit more generous this time and go a one seven five. <laughs> Slightly more generous, but uh, maybe a two, maybe. Um, but uh, I think that overall this is going to have like a three point six eight. You're high three point three one. Mm. So I, I think, I, but sixty two thousand check ins. I mean that's a lot. So mm. I, yeah, I, I think. As, as summer beers go, there's other, you know, mainstream choices here. This is probably a, uh, it's probably a staple in Texas, but maybe not necessarily up here. So that may be where you get the, the lower. I would love to get one on tap. I've never seen it on tap. I would love to try that as well. I bet it's way more, this probably, Dolan would not like this. I bet it's way more floral. Probably. Mm. I'd like a 25 ounce frosty mug full of this. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I, I did write that though in my comment the first time I checked it in. Maybe, Maybe it would be good. better on tap. That's true. Hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'd probably go, yeah, I go three, three point two five somewhere in there, three and a half ish. It's fine. Yeah. It'd be a good post lawn mowing beer. I like it just because it's it's light, it's refreshing, it's different. Like there's no other beer that I have had that tastes, you know, like that. That it's is sweet. true. It's sweet, but it's not too sweet. You don't mm-hmm. like, you're not puckering. It's got some tartness. I don't know. For what it is, I think it's pretty good. Yeah. I, I don't think Shiner has not disappointed us yet. So I will. For six ninety nine a six pack. Come on. <laughs> that was a good deal at Hy-Vee that day. That's not a bad deal at all. So next week we are going to cross over into the sweet realm though. Uh, we're going to well yeah. you would think so right i would think so you know i i'm a little hesitant i'm, I'm probably doling in the, in the next episode I, I don't know we'll see what happens mm-hmm. i've always so next week we're gonna do a cider 
and it's first a local. One. Oh. Our first cider ever. Yeah, and it's a local place. So we will we'll uh, we'll do a cider, and uh, who knows? I don't know. I, I, a summer cider. I've I've always enjoyed ciders. I've always liked them. So okay. I have a feeling I will I'll probably enjoy next. So you'll you'll be more the um, expert on that one because I'm I'm a cider newbie. Mm, I love them. I love them. So it's one of those things where I'm not ashamed if it's on the menu and I haven't seen it before. I'll order it. So bang, get it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So all right. Brian, we're not going anywhere for a while. Let's have another beer. Thank you for listening to A Beer with Atlas. Special thanks to our brand team for producing the show. Each episode of A Beer with Atlas is powered by Atlas Medstaff, an industry leader in travel healthcare staffing.